useful stuff. It's called sodium polystyrene sulfonate, a powder. When you see those powder commercials of high protein and they go, mm, mm, mm. Well, I don't know if I'm gonna say mm, mm, when I read when I drink this stuff. You take four level teaspoons. I got the teaspoons. I got the cup of water. It doesn't look like it stays suspended in there. And uh, I got the mixer. <clears throat> well, it just tastes like water with a powdery stuff in it. No flavor. And the stuff doesn't stay mixed very well. <coughs> flavor at all. Tastes like I'm drinking chalk. So, I don't know if that's about why. So yesterday I went in for a doctor. <coughs> Sorry. <coughs> ah. And uh, they did some blood work. Got all the way home. It was like an hour ride. And they said, you got to come back. Go to the emergency room. Your potassium is too high. And so I went back. And they said, well, maybe they screwed up on the blood. So we're going to redo the blood about an hour. And then uh, we did that. And uh, we did. They did another EKG, which they had already done this morning. <laughs> in the morning, that was just as fine as it was earlier. But look at me, and they think that I have heart problems, and I don't. And uh, and they don't believe it until they run tests to find out. <clears throat> so my potassium level were high because when I was in the nursing home, they were giving me twice the potassium. Uh, because they were, because the the food was, was so high in sodium that I had to be on, you know, these high di diuretics to compensate. Nobody thought to cut my potassium back down when I went to got into the outside world. So back to the emergency room and they did EKG again and they did more blood work and basically I sat in a room for two hours. Uh, they should have put me on an EKG machine and monitored my heart the whole time I was in there because when I was all done, they wanted me to go check into the hospital so they could monitor my heart rate for a couple of days. But it's like, well, if they really, if it was such a concern, why weren't they monitoring it in the emergency room? So with going into the hospital and to me, I'm not going to volunteer to go into the hospital. I'm only going to go into the hospital because I had to dial 911 and get carted there by ambulance. And that is a different story altogether. I, when I'm in the hospital, my diabetes is treated properly. So I'm usually up around 350 instead of, you know, 125. And I am at home. And uh, watching my sodium and watching what I eat at home. Actually, the food in that particular hospital is pretty darn good. And you can pretty much pick whatever you want as long as it's within your your uh, choices. But 
they're not going to take care of my wound care that I that I'm working on getting my foot healed and my other leg staying healthy. I mean, there's a lot of things that they're not going to do, and I don't want to go backwards by a couple of months just because they think that's where I should be. Uh, it's maybe it's a stupid decision. It might be. I make all kinds of stupid decisions every day. That's me. Stupid. <laughs> but to me, I can do this stuff at home. You know, if I hadn't gone in there yesterday and had the blood work done, everybody's been looking at my blood work for the last three or four times, and it's been high every single time, and nobody's reacted to it. And the only difference yesterday was it was a cardiologist versus a... a uh, other types of doctors and most of the other doctors will say well oh, it's not my department so can't really comment on it you got to talk to the specialist so i signed myself out against medical device hey i always wanted to do that i see people do it on tv all the time i always wanted to sign myself out against america uh, about medical advice and uh See, and that's the other thing, too. I was at the uh, hospital in Southern Berkshire County, which is a really nice, it's a country hospital. It has, uh, you know, it just has that country feel about it. Uh, but that wasn't where I was going. I was going to be transferred by ambulance up to being up to the hospital that's up in Pittsfield. And... Uh, you know, once you're in the system, you're in the system. They could say anything they want and put me back into a nursing home instead of having me go home. Oh, you're not fit to go home. Potassium. You know, what were you thinking? You know, everything here says that you're not supposed to be taking that. It says, well, all my documentation says that that's what I was supposed to be taking. Well, you should have known better. Or, you know, they could say anything they want and not let me out of the system again. So... I think I could pretty much take care of myself here. I just try to avoid foods that are high in potassium, like tomatoes, tomatoes. I love fresh tomatoes, potatoes in the house. So no fried food, no fried French fries. But they're full of sodium, so I can't have those. So. You know, the other thing that I wanted to talk about, which is interesting, is, is that I'm, I qualified for Meals on Wheels. And all their their all their foods are really high in sodium. Um, I don't know anybody out there if you find yourself in a position, or maybe you have, as you know, a relative or a friend that's on that's on the program. But just because of you. So, like today, today was the seventeenth. I didn't actually. I didn't, oh yeah, yes I did. So today it was 560, 56. It was glazed drumstick, 100 milligrams of sodium, rice pilaf, 11. There's a good one. Spinach, 100. Now why does spinach have 100 milligrams of sodium in it? You know, I mean, if they don't put anything on it, it'd be fine. But if, they're, if it's frozen or canned or something, then that's why it's high in sodium. One slice of bread, 200 milligrams of sodium. 200! Tropical fruit mix, 10. Well, that's okay. But what they also give you is they give you milk, and that's 100 and 125 or 150 milligrams of sodium, depending on whatever it depends on so here it says five six five fifty six but in all reality it's you know it's 700 including the milk so on tuesday it had turkey with gravy mashed potatoes turkey with gravy is almost 400 milligrams of sodium now, you're telling me they have to use turkey that's full of sodium? That doesn't even make any sense. Dinner roll, 210. Mixed greens, 146. 
149. There shouldn't be anything in the mixed grains. <clears throat> mashed potatoes, 44. The mashed potatoes is lower in sodium than the mixed greens. Chicken piccata, 660 milligrams. By the time you get through with your meal, it's 1,000 milligrams for just one meal. Now, if you're doing 2,000 milligrams a day, you've just used up half your meal. And if you had something for breakfast, you probably did something like 300 milligrams for breakfast, maybe. It doesn't leave you a lot left for dinner. Tomorrow's going to be Philly cheesesteak, 469 for Philly steak, cheese picker, grilled, and cheddar cheese. Well, it's probably the cheddar cheese. Mashed potatoes is only 33, you know. Green and yellow beans, three. Several, 250. So now you're back up, 180, plus the milk. So you... They don't include the milk on the calendar, and the milk is 135. So here's 1% low fat milk, 125 for uh, Hood. So 125, and you want to add that to. Uh, you know, there's a thousand again for tomorrow. Tomorrow's gonna be a thousand. Now, no one puts this in front of you. I'm gonna eat it. Egg black parmesan again. Bean soup is 300. 472 for the eggplant parmesan. It's amazing. Cheeseburger, 384. Beef stroganoff is only 83. Well, how, why is that? <laughs> Beef stroganoff with noodles. The noodles are eight. Red cabbage, 37. This is the best meal right here. It's the beef stroganoff. Just give me that 30 days. Every day would be fine. Here's macaroni and cheese, 627 for macaroni and cheese. And then you go, you know, why aren't they using this book? Of course, it's backwards, right? I'm sure there's a way to flip it, but it doesn't, it always flips back. So this is American Heart Association, low salt cookbook. Why aren't they using this book? To prepare moves, uh, meals for the elderly. It doesn't really make any sense to me. It's just a quirky thing. It's very, very annoying. <laughs> oh, yeah, that stuff is going down really well. <laughs> I'm going to look up milk. If you had a smartphone, you could probably look this up in a heartbeat. But one of these days, just in case, it's going to talk me into a smartphone. Milk. Dry milk, chocolate milk, canned milk. Huh. They have goat's milk. Oh, here's whole milk. The so whole milk is 120 grams. 2% 2 is 122. And 1% is 123 so they're really not that much different i'd rather have the whole milk 
milk than the one percent. For as little as I drink milk, it's kind of worth it. But you know, that's also you know a counting book. If you have a smartphone, there's sites you can look it up and and pull it up like pretty quickly. But I haven't taken the smartphone plunge yet. So I'm just sharing. Now the rumor is this stuff is going to have an effect on my digestive system. So the purpose for this is to bind to the potassium and flush it out of the system. This is the type of thing that you don't go you stay home where you know exactly where the uh, China, China throne is. And they are not far away from it. But uh, then hopefully eventually I'll get back to taking my my regular dosage of potassium or, or maybe I'll just have to do it with another alternative. But so that's it for me for now. Uh, Ta-ta. Enjoy life. Ta-ta-ta-cha-cha. Ta-ta-ta-cha-cha. Ta-ta-ta-cha-cha.